Hooray! Welcome folks, welcome back to the Bailey Workshop for guitarmaking.co.uk Today we're going to be talking about truss rods Everything you wanted to know about truss rods But we're too afraid to ask um, Yeah, probably uh, not the most exciting thing you've ever heard of But um, if you're into guitars and um, you've ever wondered what the hell it is and what it does Then you're about to find out um, if this is your first time here, by the way, then um, make sure you subscribe, like and share and all do that kind of YouTube stuff. Um, what I'm going to do today is get straight on with the live demonstration. So don't forget, this is live. We're doing this live. So anything could happen in the next half hour um, or to an hour. Um, no idea. I'm going to do my best to keep it. Um, sane and under control but because it's live anything could happen um, and I do waffle a little bit more than I, I would like to but it's because it's live you see um, what I've done on the on the website is I've made um, a complete build your own courses actually for electric and acoustic where we start with blank piece of paper and a center line and we go through the whole design process design and build your own guitar completely from scratch and you end up with a, the finished instrument um, but <clears throat> so what I've done is I've filmed the entire process and we've super edited that down to super short films so if you prefer your films shorter and sweeter as has been noted in the comments <laughs> then uh, then yeah you'll have to go to the website for the uh, the full-on edited versions obviously you've got to make a living somehow so this is how I make my living, so um, we totally appreciate you guys supporting us. Um, you need to be a premium member to get on the full courses, or you can just become a supporter and you get all the free plans and loads of goodies. Um, you also get discount on all the parts and bits. So um, truss rods have just come back in stock. Massive world shortage of truss rods. They're back in stock, guys. So the link's down there if you want to get hold of some. Um, but I'm going to show you right now how we make our acoustic guitar truss rods. So check this end out. There's actually three parts to it. I'll dismantle it. And if we could have this other camera, Carol. Um, this one. Brilliant. So there's the nut. Truss rod nut. You couldn't really make that because it's it's got a a hex um, on it that's difficult to make um, but you could just use an ordinary nut I suppose these are just nicer to look at and uh, easier to adjust because you don't need a big spanner that goes around the outside you've got an allen key that goes just fits neatly in there uh, it's threaded there that's a five mil thread by the way uh, five mil thread um, these have become like um, rocking horse poo, but um, they're back in stock, so uh, rock and roll. So truss rod nut, and then there's this part of it, which is, uh, what do we call that? Truss rod adjusting nut, oh, truss rod nut, truss rod thing. So this is, the thing that makes it work actually can you see one of those holes goes all the way through and one of them doesn't might try this other camera actually can we try this one number four get close up super close up one hole goes all the way through one doesn't so that's pretty simple to make really um, and then the final part is back to this other one Cara final final part is this which is uh, the rod part of it so this is like um it's five mil bar folded over so this is what I start with five mil bar now you used to be able to buy this from um, b and Q. I I got this from b and Q originally but I'm not sure they still stock it they don't. Um, probably not Carol saying they don't so it's just five mil um, mild steel so there's nothing special about it Plain. They only stop the five mil bar 
Um, and that's all you need. You need, well, they usually sell it by the meter. So I buy like um, 20 meters at a time. Um, and this is what we use to make our truss rods. So it's folded over. There's the little fold look. And it's threaded on one side. And it's not threaded on the shorter stick. Grommet. That's what people are saying that thing's called, right? Like. We'll call it a grommet. I'm not sure that's the correct term, but it'll well, do. Cumbers Lang Steve and Super Clint, they say grommet. I should have thought of that, shouldn't I, guys? Should have thought of that before I came on the blooming internet and started pretending I know what I'm talking about. So how it works is quite clever. This goes on um, through the hole and then the short piece goes into the hole there. And then when you tighten it down, it wants to compress one rod and stretch the other, which um, obviously makes it bend. So I'm going to show you how we make that. If I can just grab a um, Allen key. <clears throat> I'll just give it a tighten and you'll see it bend. Maybe get the, um, well, yeah, the front camera would be better, I think. That one. Which is? Yep. Can we see the bend on that? Yeah. Maybe tighten it up a bit more. So you wouldn't tighten it up that much in a guitar, but hopefully you can see that, pick up that it's bending. See that, can't you? Mm. Simply because one rod's being stretched, one rod's being pulled through the hole, and the other one can't be pulled through the hole, so it bends. Um, I'll show you some different styles of truss rod in a minute. But what I want to do is get straight on with the demonstration. So, um... Can I tell you that Clint says, oh wow, I can see how it works now. Makes sense. Yep. Well, there's some other types of truss rod I'll show you in a minute as well. But um, first of all, I'm going to show you how we make that. So here's my piece of 5 mil bar. It's about a metre long, just because um, that's how long it came supplied. I'm going to put uh, some thread on the end of it. Which one are we on? Yes, yeah, because it's too far away. Let me put it closer. Better. Right, does it? I'll bring this one over as well. It is. It's a close up lens. Right, so. Can we just camera one for a second, Carol? Yeah, camera one. This, folks, is called cutting compound, cutting paste. It's like, um, it's kind of like grease, but it's got hard particles in it that will, um, that will cut the metal on a tiny scale. Uh, so it's kind of like, well, I used to say it's like Ajax, but nobody's ever heard of Ajax. They don't make that anymore. Um, it's an abrasive, it's like abrasive um, grease, basically. So what we do is we put a bit of that on the, on the end of the stick. Yeah, go to the other cam, it's better. And then this is my um, die. So for putting threads on, you have a, a tap and a die. So a tap, the easiest way to remember it is a tap goes down the middle and a die goes around the outside. You tap a hole and then we put a, 
we use a die to thread an exterior thread like this. I'm going to use my old self locking pliers, John Lockett's favourite pliers. The old self locking pliers, um, what I do is I just use my, my belly there to stop it from rotating. <laughs> Clip that on and it stops the rod from rotating. So um, I need to colour ban balance that little camera. Eh? That belly cam. Belly cam. <laughs> right, so getting it started is a bit tricky. But the trick with this is there's three cutters and so you can't cut more than a third of a turn. So what I do is I just do little tiny cuts just to get it going. It's very easy to kind of like de-thread it as you go. So now it's, now it's going. I'm going to give you an overhead view of really close up of this die in a minute, cutting its way down. So if you imagine there's three cutters on there, so as you turn it, um, let's have a look at that, Carol. So as we turn this, there's three cutters in there. Hopefully you can see the three cutters. They will, um, they will raise three little burrs. If you continue just carrying on forwards, then the little metal burr that's been being removed will get mashed up into the threads. And if that happens, then you'll end up with a really rough looking thread broken before you've even started. So if you watch what I do is we never go more than a third of a turn forward and then we go half a turn back to break it off. So if you just watch what I do, I go a third of a turn forward and then half a turn back and I can feel it breaking off. So I go a third of a turn forward and then half a turn back and I can feel it break off. Maybe you can hear it as well if I keep quiet for a minute. Now you can hear it breaking off. You can feel it as well. So uh, I don't know about you guys, but I did this at school. They taught me how to do this at school. Uh, do they still do that? Are any of you guys still young enough to remember? School. <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> yeah, we did threading at school. I wasn't allowed to do metal work because I was a girl. Mm. Things have changed. Now I'm about halfway down, I'm going to wind this off and apply more gunk. So the technical word for this stuff is gunk. Just clean the old swarf away and put a little bit of gunk on. Please don't go into a shop and ask for gunk. <laughs> it's cool. Clint said, did you even learn the belly technique at school? No, they never taught us that. The belly technique's advanced technique. Deej says he might need shorter pliers if he's going to use that with all the food that he's had over lockdown. <laughs> might never see him again. <laughs> So I'm going to put about half an inch of thread on this. Um, I'm just going to do it by eye. Obviously you can measure it if you, if you want to, but I'm using my guitar maker's eye. I might try a different angle, Carol, if you switch the camera a minute. Yeah, try that one a minute. I'm going to just see if I can get a bit over the top. What's that like? Luthier's eye view, guys. <laughs> Luthier's eye view. Yeah, I'm going to end up strapping it to my face, aren't I, this camera? It's Russ's fault. Was it Russ who told me to get a GoPro? No, I think it was Matt in general. Oh, yeah, Matt Taman. Nice one, Matt. 
I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying it too. The old uh, action cam there. So that's it. That's all I need is about half an inch of thread. I'm going to uh, wind it up and down a few times. And what that does is it just polishes the thread. And makes it nice and smooth. And there we go. Look at that. Another thing you can do is you can tighten these little nuts here. And then that will just take a shave more off. And you can polish your threads that way. Usually if I wind it up and down a few times, that's more than good enough for our purposes. Done. Let's just give that a little clean. We would put a little drop of oil on that before we um, put it in the guitar. Not too much oil because you don't want oil all over your wood seeping through your wood. So there's the first part done, the thread. Let's take it out of the vise. And the second part is to put the bend in. So this is the fun part. Canvas Life Steve's come up with a word for the green stuff. What's that? Gromit gunk. Gromit gunk. Gromit gunk. Gromit gunk. I was thinking uh, a gorilla snot or something like that. So if you're making your own truss rod, you'll need a, a die. That's a 5mm die on 5mm um, bar. So obviously it's made to fit the, the bar. And you can buy a whole set of those. Um, but as I always recommend, there's no point buying a whole set because I'll never use any of the others. I only ever use this one. So I just bought a really good one. i um, got a couple of spares, so I bought three, I think. But the um, point is, buy one really good one rather than a whole set that you'll never use. And you end up with a rubbish one in... Anyway. Um, can I interject at this point? Of course you can. Because DJ, um, DJ just said that he's, he's, he's got um, imperial measurement pattern dies with dads. Are they any use to you? To be honest, Deej, I, I don't use them. I only ever use my 5mm die. Um, I'm sure that, um, you know, occasionally I do come in, in need for a, for a weird shaped die, but... Um, Can he use imperial dies? What? Yeah, uh, no. No, because you need to use 5mm bar. If you use 6mm um, bar, then you end up, you're doubling the size of the depth of your truss rod slot. Um, not doubling it, but you end up with a deeper truss rod slot. Um, so you can do that, but I'm using 5mm bar because then you haven't got to go so deep. Look, it's doubled up. So, um, yeah. Keep them for prosperity, Deej. Keep them for those times when you just might need them. But, um, you know, we don't at the moment. We just use, we just need the five mil one. That's all you you guys will need if you if you want to do this. So yeah, we'll do a few questions and I'll show you the next bit. Well, it's relevant now. Um, Matt is asking. Matt in Denver is asking, how long is the threaded part of the, uh, well, the bit of bit that you just threaded? Um, so yeah, it was about half an inch. In mil. In about twelve mil. It's not super critical. Um, as I said, I did say that at the time. I just, right. I just measured it by eye, uh, about half an inch, or say twelve to fifteen mil. It doesn't really matter. It's not crucial, as you'll see. Um, you know, as long as you've got enough thread, you can always make adjustments afterwards, as, as well. You want about four, four or five threads to put to put your nut onto. So if you're ever working out the length, um, so that's what I was going to get onto is the length of the, the overall length of the rod. So the length of the threaded bit is about uh, 12 mil, half an inch to 15 mil or something. And, uh, and the overall length of the rod we're going to talk about now. We've got a question though first. Just a quick one. Um, Bill Flood says that B&Q have varnished drawn steel round bar, five mil. 
varnished perfect steel. yeah Is that's that fine right? yeah that's fine right that's, that's moving. drawn steel yeah so obviously they've got back in stock um they're putting a coating on it to stop it go rusty but that's absolutely fine that will just um that will just you can just ignore that it will just burn off when you're doing the next bit that I'm going to show you. So, to determine the length of your truss rod, um, th this is specific to acoustic guitars. So if, you, if, if this is an electric guitar, ignore this, we'll talk about electric guitars in a minute. I'm going to show you some electric guitar truss rods. Um, this is for acoustic guitars. Um, the length of the truss rod depends on your scale length because um, obviously the length of the neck will depend on what scale length so um, I can't tell you the length for every neck also depends on whether you're having a 12 fret join or a 14 fret join so there's lots of variables um, yeah on the course I'll I show you how to work it out um, but I can't really do that now. All I'm going to do is show you the standard length, okay? So this is for a standard, this is the standard truss rod that we send out. If you buy an acoustic guitar kit from us, then this is the truss rod that you'll get in the kit. Um, and it's exactly the right length for you. So you haven't got to worry about that. Um, but the length obviously depends on the scale length of the guitar, the number of frets you have in, also depends on the type of joint. Um, it's got to extend past the, the the joint into the body. So for a mortise and tenon, which I recommend on the course, that's a, um, acoustic neck joints, you'll have to look that up. A tenon is longer than a dovetail. So on a tenon it's 25 mil and on a dovetail it's only 16 mil. So that affects the length of the truss rod, you see. So I don't normally make the truss rod until after I've made the dovetail and check the fit in the body. When I'm happy that the dovetail fits into the body okay, then I can make my truss rod and I know exactly how long it needs to be. Okay, so that's how I work out the length of my truss rod. Um, hopefully that makes some kind of sense. But because our standard scale length is 25.4, which is standard, um, then our necks are always gonna turn out the same length. Then I can make our standard truss rod using these measurements right here which i'm going to tell you so from the threaded end here carol threaded end over here can't see it can i here's the threaded end this is going to be the long end which sticks through the hole i'm going to measure 390 millimeters and i'm going to make a notch 390 mil, make a little notch. So this, if we can get a close up of it, is um, this is where the bend's. Oops, this is where the bend's going to be, folks. So I'm going to cut through about a third of the way maybe maybe um maybe a bit less than that we'll maybe cut through uh maybe 25 percent of the way 390 mil i'll just double check that what do we do check twice cut once check twice just there Cut once, about 25% of the way through, just like that. So what we're making here is we're making a notch. I was hoping we'd get a better close-up than that. Okay. I can't see it. Okay. Can you? Yeah. That's better, a bit better. There's our notch, look. About 25% of the way through. We're going to use that, Carol. We're going to use that to um, 
It's better if you switch the camera before I move the camera, Carol. That's what I was saying. We're going to use that notch there to bend it with, right? So I'm going to use this. This is just a spanner. It's flat. It's got nice sharp edges. And I like to bend it around that. So I'm going to put that in my vise here. And here's the technique, right? So I'm going to move over to my... And what I'm going to do is heat it up until it's nice and hot. It's going to be clamped in this vise. When it's glowing cherry red, then I'm going to bring it over. And I'm going to put the notch into the corner there. So let's get so we can see that. Can you see it on the little close-up cam? Yeah. So there's my notch. Notch goes into the corner and then I'm going to bend it double. Usually what we have to do is um, put it back in the heat, heat it up again, and then we're going to whack it until it's basically until it's flat like that. Until one rod sits on top of the other one. Okay. So let's do it. So we're going to heat up that area. Don't need gloves, no, it's fine. You can use a, just an ordinary blowtorch for this. Now, if you're doing this, then obviously you've got to be super careful. Um, never leave anything like this unattended. Don't walk away and leave it going. It does take a little while. So, uh, be super careful. So, uh, I'm going to use this. This is actually a, uh, a garden weed destroyer. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Weed whacker. Weed burner. Um, I found it's got a really good flame on it. So, I'm going to use this one because it's a lot faster. I could just clamp it in the vise there. <laughs> Being extremely careful, aren't you? Of course I am. Make sure everything's lined up. So we want to heat up maybe, um, you only really need to heat up maybe three quarters of an inch. It's quite noisy folks, so brace yourselves. Um, and uh, we'll do some questions while it's getting hot. If anybody's got any questions. <clears throat> Takes a minute or two just to get hot. Maybe we can get some... Um, shots of it. I want to be able to see when I bend it. I think you'll have to be on this camera when I bend it, Carol. Obviously, um, when it gets hot, I have, I have to move it over to the, to the thing really fast. Now, the bit at the top doesn't get hot, so I can just pick it up there. But um, obviously, you can wear gloves if you're worried about that. But this bit at the top's not going to get hot. It's already getting, getting warm, look, if you can see that. Starting to glow. Maybe zoom in on it. Whoa. So which camera is going to be better for the bending, Carol? zoom out on that so you can get that one as well. It's looking nice and hot now guys. But that's number four. Yeah, you do that one. And then that's... Yeah, so cut, cut from that one to number four then. When, when I'm ready. Right, I'm going to get ready to go. Now, if you remember, I did have a practice. Always a good idea to have a practice first. And I did do that. So if you're ready to cut to the other camera, then I'm going to go for it. Enjoy. 
into the notch, bend it round, lovely. Now I'm going to heat it up again. Give it another heat and now I'm going to whack it flat. So we don't need this anymore, we're going to lose this. Close up Carol so they can see what I'm doing. I'm taking this out now. I'm just going to use this surface as a anvil. Now I do have a proper metal worker's vise with an anvil on it, but um, that's over in the other corner. So I'm not using that today. I'm just showing you guys, you can just do it with any old vise. It's nice and hot again, so let's just give it a whack. So if it's not hot enough, what will happen is it will split. You can turn that off now. Move it out the way. Put that safe. Okay, so um, what was I saying? Yeah, if it's not hot enough, then it will split on the end. And if, if it's too hot, then if you heat up too much of the area, then it's really hard to line it up the notch and you end up bending it. Um, you end up with a massive big bend, um, but that's good enough. What I'm going to do is just clamp it in the vise to cool down. Clint says this is hardcore. Hardcore! Heavy metal. Yeah, one thing that I really like about um, guitar making, um, it's never dull because You've got woodwork. People think it's mostly woodwork. Um, actually, you do meet the odd person who's surprised that they're actually made out of wood. But yes, most guitars are made from wood. So there's woodwork, and then you've got a bit of metal work, as you can see. You've got um, a bit of electronics, electrical stuff, soldering, and what? you've got fire and a big hammer. <laughs> yeah, finishing, and you get to play with fires and big hammers. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, I did promise I was going to show you how we make the curved chisels. So and that's coming up um, and sharpening and that kind of stuff. But I've also got, this is my um, <laughs> guitar maker's knife, which, um, which I use for carving certain areas of the neck. It's great for getting in on the heel and the volute of necks. Uh, you can use it as a scraper as well. These are awesome. Um, so at some point very soon, I'm also going to show you how to make uh, these um, guitar maker's knives. It's otherwise known as a violin maker's knife or a skew chisel. Um, but I'm going to be um, making these. These will be available to buy on the shop as well very soon. And uh, I'm going to show you how, how we make them. So you'll be able to make your own if you want. Um, and the guitar maker's curved chisel is also coming up as well. Brilliant, so that should be nice and cool now. We've got two questions. We've got a couple of questions, go um, for it. So DJ is saying, can you stick it in water or would that make it brittle? Like I said on the last live stream, I'm so glad you guys are here because I meant to say that. Don't quench it in water because that will make it go brittle because that is how you work hard and that's how you um, that's how you uh, harden metal, is you heat it up and then you quench it fast uh, and it will go really hard. Now if it goes hard like that, then um, it will become brittle and it's much more likely to snap on the end. So we just cool it slowly uh, and then it's, it doesn't, it doesn't um, become brittle and it's not a problem. So that, that leads to, Ewan Black's asked a question, he's saying why, do, why don't you uh, weld two bits together instead of bending them? Or is there, you know, is there a reason not to do that? I haven't got a welder. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's something nice about that though, isn't there? It doesn't have to be welded. You could weld it. There's no, there's no law against that. It could be two rods with a weld there, for sure. Make sure it's cooled down before you start touching it. <laughs> Otherwise you'll end up with a blister on your finger like I did the other day. Right, what I'm going to do here is now cut it to length. 
obviously, as I said, the length depends on your um, guitar, so I'm not going to get into that now. You can make these truss rods any length you want. That's one of the things that I like about it in particular, this particular style of truss rod. So... Yeah, that's okay. I've lost my little nut. Oh, there it is. Just want to get the rough length on it. About there. As I said, when, when it's finished, I want to leave about four threads poking out. Well, let's say three to five is ideal. So what I can do is put a piece of scrap under there to protect where I'm cutting through. And then we're on this one, so I'll fit that through the hole. Can we try this other cam? See if it's better. Uh, what number? Four. Oh, yeah, that looks better. Need to colour correct that one, eh? Yeah. So the threaded bit goes through the hole. That goes into the hole that doesn't go all the way through. We've got about four threads sticking out. So that looks pretty good. And then we can put the the nut on. So the only thing left to do now is to wrap it up. Switch to the other camera carol. I'm just going to give it a tap. Just tap that nut there to get it to sit straight. I'm just going to nip the nut finger tight and then we use... Oh, what I didn't do, sorry was I didn't get the file, clean up the end because it helps it go into the hole. If I just twist it and then I can let the rod rotate as I go like that and uh, just put a little chamfer on, take off the burr. Good enough. It should fit together a bit better now. There we go. So if you get the length of your thread wrong, you can always chop a bit off. If you get it too short, you can always chop this one a bit shorter. It's okay to be a little bit out. There we go, about four threads there. So the only thing left to do now is wrap it. Colour may vary. Um, we like oh, back to the cam then, Carol. Okay. So this is just insulation tape, and I'm going to start here and just wrap it. Colour may vary, but what you never want to do is once this is in the guitar, you never ever want to see the colour again. <laughs> if you see this colour when you're carving the guitar neck, then you know you're in trouble. Right. We're going overhead. We're going overhead. I can't believe it. The crowd went wild. 40 minutes. 40 minutes, no way. And there we have it, guys. There's our finished acoustic truss rod. I'm just going to prove to you that it actually works before we uh, 
move on and I'm going to show you some electric guitar truss rods. <laughs> So you've got a question, TV says why wrap it? Wrapping it, um, it holds the two bars together so it makes it work better. Also, it stops it from ringing. You know, um, the last thing you want is a piece of metal that's vibrating inside your um, acoustic instrument. Um, you know, it'll start singing, maybe vibrating in sympathy with the note that's being played. So it stops it from vibrating and making sound. As you can see, it's dead. So let's tighten it up. Niall's online and he said... Hey, Niall. He says, yeah, I remember that on my neck. The peek through. Oh, it does happen once in a while. There you go. And there's our curve. So there you go. Proof that it works. Brilliant. So that is the truss rod that we use for our acoustic guitars. Our electric guitars are slightly different. Um, now this is what we would call a one-way truss rod. The acoustic one is a one-way truss rod. Um, Here's another one-way truss rod. Um, but I didn't really explain what a truss rod is for, so let's do that now. I didn't want to bore those guys who just want to get on with it and do it. So when you put your strings on and tune it up, which this one is obviously isn't in tune, those are metal strings and there's quite a lot of tension. It actually bends the neck this way. So it will bend the neck this way under tension the truss rod is adjustable basically to bend it back so the truss rod's there to straighten the neck um, to counteract the tension of the strings that's what it's for so you've just seen one working um, and because the strings are tightening up then generally the neck only moves one way you only really need a one-way truss rod so this, this acoustic truss rod I just made is, is perfect. As is this, this is a one-way truss rod, another design that we could use for electrics. Um, but occasionally you'll get a guitar with back bow. Um, that is wood's wood. If it's gonna move, it's gonna move. And there's nothing you can do about it. We try and get um, the most stable wood we can. Um, we use quarter sawn wood, so it's less likely to move and all that kind of stuff. But over the years, I guess there is a chance that it could back bow. And if the neck bends the wrong way, you can't undo the truss rod because the nut just falls off, as you saw with the acoustic truss rod. So um, there are one-way truss rods and there are also two-way truss rods. Um, the truss rods that we stock in the shop are the two-way ones just adds a bit of extra um, insurance, just in case, I guess. Um, usually unnecessary, nine out of 10 times or 99% out of 100 times, it's unnecessary, but they actually fit into the same size slot as the one way one. So, um, you know, there's no loss, nothing lost, only gained a bit of insurance. So, um, these are the truss rods that I prefer and the ones that I, um, the ones that we're supplying on the shop. A two-way truss rod, it fits into a really small slot which is just quarter of an inch wide and nine mil deep. So I tend to go 10 mil deep and then we glue in a wooden fillet on the top. Um, so I'm not gonna tell you how to install a truss rod today. I've already done that on previous live streams. You can look back and see that. Um, but my main point about these rods is how small the cross section is. So the old style of truss rod, here's the old style. It used to fit into a quite a big chunky hole. I've got one. Um, got one in progress somewhere. Where's it gone?
Yeah, it was there a minute ago. Lewis was waving it about. It's gone now. That's typical, isn't it? No. No. Can you use heat? Oh, it's here. I've got it out already. I'm an idiot. Look. So you can see it's a lot wider slot. That's a that's a quarter of an inch slot to compare. So the bigger your truss rod, um, the more chance of you carving into it. So uh, yeah, the new ones are a little bit easier to fit as well, I think. So what was the question, Carol, sorry? Can you use heat shrink instead of insulation Yeah, sure you could use heat shrink, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? That would look nice and neat and sexy. Obviously heat shrink's more expensive than uh, insulation tape, so um, sure, use heat shrink if you've got it. Definitely. Roger Appleby says, um, if you, if the bars were welded, would they not? They wouldn't move correctly to bends, would they? Well, the the acoustic truss rod, you you just it's just welded at one end. Well, I've doubled it over, but you could weld that. So let me show you a bit more about these um, these two way ones. If we can get in a bit closer on camera three. Have a look at this oh, end. No, there's a weld there, look. And there's a weld on the other end. The thing to notice is, or you can't see this, but um, this thread is left-hand thread, right? Left-hand thread, and on the other end, normal thread. Okay. And then there's a, a flat metal bar welded to those bits. Let me show, can we have the other camera, Carol? Because that wasn't very good for close up. Uh, is that overhead? No, four, please. Right, so that is a block of metal with a left hand thread down the middle of it. It's a left hand thread on this end and it's welded there. We don't make these truss rods, by the way. We buy these in. Um, same this end, but it's a right-hand thread. So one of them's a left-hand thread, one of them's a right-hand thread. And what it does is it, I guess it doubles the effect. It makes it a two-way truss rod. So this one, if we have the other camera again, I didn't explain that very well, but hopefully it made some kind of sense. But this one will bend both ways. See, so that's bending that. That way, and then if I do it the other way. Oops. So, um, we've even occasionally had people install them upside down. It doesn't matter, because you can just do it the other way. It's not the end of the world if you put it in upside down. Normally it would go in flat side up. In case you're wondering, this way up. Um, if you want to know more about um, how to put your truss rods in and all that kind of stuff, then head over to the website, guitarmaking.co.uk, and you'll see I've got the full courses there, which includes electric and acoustic guitar. And obviously, as part of the build, we're installing truss rods. So, um, yeah, so if you want to know how to put them in, also, I did cover it on the recent live streams as well. So um, if you want the, the free version, which is uh, a bit long winded, then you can do that. But if you want the super short edited version, then head over to the, to the website. And uh, yeah, we appreciate any support you can give us. Um, is a big, massive help. Trust Rod's back in stock. So head over there and get your Trust Rod's. Um, and I think we've got a couple of questions before we finish. Um. And then we're going to call it a day. So just a couple of questions. We've got, well, there's, a few, there's some really important ones. Um, EP said, can they, do they corrode? Can you, and if so, can you prevent corrosion? Well, we don't, we wouldn't normally splash a load of oil on it, but you could just put a thin coat of oil on. We normally do that on all the threaded parts before we assemble the guitar. Um, and... 
every now and again, as part of the maintenance procedure, you would put just a tiny drop of oil on the threads. Um, beyond that, because it's sealed inside the guitar, then it doesn't really rust. So there's no, um, you know, I've taken them out years, years later and there's been no, no rust on it. So I guess it's not a problem. Um, they're usually coated in something, whether it's uh, plastic or, or wrapped and um, that's all it really needs. So yeah, next question. Right, there's some fast one, fast here. Quick fire um, round. Right, we've got um, uh, Clint uh, in the US is saying, can we put silicone um, in around the truss rod to stop vibration? Is that a good idea? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, it's kind of like a last resort thing. Um, if you're building a guitar from new, then you probably, I wouldn't really recommend that. What the method that we use um, is. The truss rod is actually held firmly in place by what we call the truss rod fillet. So you can see it on this one here. The truss rod's in there and there's a piece of wood on top of it. That's stopping it from rattling, you see. If you ever have a guitar where you pick it up and, and it's rattling, then it's because they've skipped putting the fillet in. Um, a lot of factory um, built guitars, factory built guitars, they don't bother with the fillet. And you can end up with a little gap between the truss rod and the fretboard and it can rattle, vibrate, make all sorts of weird noises. And um, putting a bit of silicon on it can actually stop it from vibrating. So it's actually used as a repair technique, um, but it's not really done, or at least in my tiny knowledge, it's not really done on new guitars. Maybe there are some makers that do it, but I find wrapping it, wrapping it in something dulls the sound. That's rattling because it's still got the nut on and it's not tight, but that's going to stop it ringing and then it's actually clamped in place. Um, I, I wanted to show you actually what it looks like because can you see it's rounded bottom slot? This is one of the reasons I really like this truss rod because it's a round bottom slot. So, um, yeah, I also supply the cutter to do that on the website. Um, acoustic guitar truss rod slot cutter. Um, if you imagine that was a square slot, then at the back of the neck here, you've kind of got like a weak point where you want to carve your neck nice and thin, but you're carving, you've got those two corners. And um, if maybe if you go a bit deep on your truss rod slot or you carve your neck a bit, Thin, a eh, Nile. <laughs> you might see your truss rod coming back through again, um, which isn't a good experience. Basically, I think you've got to start again if that happens. You, you build, you're building your neck again from scratch if that happens. Um, so a rounded bottom slot is great because it just makes it really strong in that area there. So all my guitars have got that. And if you look what it looks like on the end, I mean, uh, elegant. I like to. I like it because it's elegant. I'm going to use that word. Let's get a close up on there. I mean, look at that. What number is that? Four. Four. And then um, the actual fillet that we clamp in on top is also rounded bottom. So you end up with this little oval shape. I can't show you, but if you join up on the course, then there's all close ups of that, and you can see that. Um, it ends up being a really neat slot. Um, this is what I recommend. This is the standard truss rod design that we use on our acoustic builds. So there you go. I hope you. Uh, I've got questions, by the way. Hope you like that. I do. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at that. It's the most beautiful truss rod slot Damn. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Right, questions? Oh, I'm so sad. I, I actually like my truss rod slot. Quite proud of that. <laughs> questions? Go on, then. Right, these, these are good ones. A few more right. questions and then we're going to have to stop. Well, that's good. Right, so um, Bill Flood says, what about when you have a one-piece neck? Hey, Bill. What about the skunk stripe? Do you use the same truss rod? When you do a one-piece neck? Um, skunk stripe. 
Yes, uh, here's a one piece neck with a skunk stripe. Completely different truss rod design. So, um, good job you're, you're here, innit, Bill? We used to make them as well, didn't we? So, this is a different type of truss rod. It's just one rod, look. It's what you'd call a compression style. So, these can go in straight. I normally pre bend it. So, when it's installed, it's pre bent. And then, as you tighten it up, it tries to straighten itself out. And that's bending the neck. So, where's my neck going? So this is a, a one-piece neck with a skunk stripe. It's a bit more tricky to make. This is why um, I don't recommend it on the course. Um, but if that's what you want to do, then leave a comment, let me know, and I'll, I'll do a video on how to do a skunk stripe. But it is a bit more tricky. Um, there are different ways to do it. There's several different ways to do it. Different builders do it different ways. What I do is I like to um, I like to have the truss rod nut this end if I'm if I'm doing this style of guitar, truss rod nut adjuster this end, and then the actual slot is curved, so it's quite tricky to do. You have to machine a curved slot, and then you have to drill through to join up with it. So um, not recommended. We used to do all our guitars like that because it is actually the cheapest way to do it. Because um, again, you can make your own truss rod and you're using half the amount of metal. Uh, so it is the cheapest way to make a guitar neck. That is why Leo Fender, in my opinion, was a genius because he worked out the cheapest possible way to manufacture a neck from just one piece of wood. Genius. Um, the cheapest way to make a guitar. Not necessarily the best though. Really quick question. I've got, I've got, these are quite important. Go on then. So, uh, Miguel, who is watching in Chile. Um, hey, he, Miguel in Chile. Uh, I hope you're well. He's asked you what wood, um, you know, it was the truss rod, you know, the close up at the end that's elegant. What wood is that? He said? Oh, it's mahogany. It looks a bit weird because there's wax on the end. It's still got the wax on the end from when it was dipped. Um, he's in the right part of the world for buying it. Yeah, often when you buy a piece of wood, I don't think I've got one fresh. When, you, when, when they rough saw wood, they dip the end in wax because um, when wood's wet, obviously it needs to dry out before we can make a guitar out of it. Um, it needs to be proper dry and wood always dries out a lot faster from the ends and so it tends to split on the ends. You look at an old piece of wood, you'll notice it splits on the ends. That's because moisture escapes a lot faster from the end than it does from the middle. And so to prevent it splitting, they often dip the end of the wood in wax. Um, and it's often dipped in, when I get it, it's already dipped. Um, this piece was already dipped and it looks a bit weird on the end, that's why. It's just wax. But it's a piece of mahogany, that is. Should we see what it sounds like? Wow. See, if it sounds good now, it's only going to sound better as a guitar, isn't it? That's actually from, that's yeah, I think FSC. that's your neck head, if you're watching. It's FSC from, from South America, I think. Um, right, the, another question is, uh, uh, Niles asked about the base, the base truss rod, the one with the wheels. How, what are the pros and cons of using the truss rod that's got a wheel adjuster on it, you know the thing? It's harder to hide it, so you need a, a bigger cavity to hide it basically, um, if you're hiding it. If you're not hiding it, then you just leave it exposed, then it just it just makes it easy to adjust. But um, I don't know if this is true for all guitar makers, but most guitar makers, they don't want you to touch the truss rod. <laughs> don't touch the truss rod. You shouldn't need to, once it's set, um, you know, provided it's settled down into its environment, you might need to do an initial setup. Um, but you shouldn't really ever have to touch the truss rod unless you change the gauge of strings, or unless it goes to a new environment, like a really dry environment, it might settle, um, or a really wet environment that's different to the one it was made in. Uh, there are lots of different types of truss rod available, so, don't take my word for it. Um, by all means, go and try them out. 
Um, for me, I like to I like to have them as small and discreet as possible. So that's what works for me. But um, yeah, whatever works for you guys. Go on then. So lots of people, lots of thanks for uh, the demo showing, you know, showing uh, you doing it live. And uh, Robin Gosman's just said, um, at last he understands how the trust would works, but the curve trust log slot has explained something to him. Brilliant, yeah. And uh, now the, that slot on a bolt on neck, that slot, it doesn't have to be curved but it makes the truss rod more effective. Imagine if that, if that slot was straight, right? You put a straight truss rod in, one of these ones before you bend it, put a straight one in, right? Then when you tune your strings, the neck bends. So if you tighten your truss rod, it's gonna take, take the truss rod with it when it bends. When you tighten your truss rod, it tries to straighten itself. That will straighten your neck. That's a compression style truss rod. It's really old fashioned and we don't really do that anymore. Um, it's not very responsive. Usually if you've got a really old guitar, especially an old acoustic guitar, it may well have an old style compression rod. It probably doesn't work anymore. So I think we're, we're, one last question, we're done. Yeah, uh, Lewis McMillan asks, what colour tape Lewis. does he need to put round his truss rod to make him play like Tommy Emmanuel? Hey Lewis. <laughs> So uh, yeah, Lewis is, uh, works with me. He's kind of like our apprentice here in the workshop. So uh, that's Lewis. Uh, Lewis, very funny, Lewis. <laughs> uh, gold tape. It's got to be gold metallic tape if you want to sound like Tommy Emmanuel. And a sprinkling of fairy dust. Put some fairy dust on it, yeah. And glue it in with um, unicorn poo. Jim McMillan is loving his new chisels, he said. Oh, brilliant, yeah, so most of you guys should already have had your chisels by now, but there's another batch on its way to you right now. So if you haven't had your chisels or rasps yet, then um, any minute now, it's imminent, it's on their way. Um, yeah, so head over to the site if you're not sure what I'm talking about. Check out our curved guitar maker chisels. They're awesome. And our rasps. And also, um, look out... As I was saying earlier, pretty soon I'm going to show you how we make, this is my guitar maker's knife. This is my personal little treasured tool. It's probably one of my favourite tools. Um, my first one was made for me by Rob Williams, but unfortunately it got stolen along with a load of all my other tools back in the day. So I made this one and I'm going to show you guys how to do it in an upcoming live stream coming up. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it, and all that youtube -y stuff. And what's more important, check twice, cut once. <laughs>